It's Kitty Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. It's the Kitty Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Giddy. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. And yeah, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Welcome to the Giddy Gang Show. Let me turn this down just a fuzz. All right, uh, we are glad to be here with you again today on this fine Friday afternoon here in beautiful New England. Uh, we had a bit of a nor'easter a couple of days ago, la night before last. Some of us lost power for a few hours, some of us did not, but always good times. It could be a whole lot worse. We'd like to welcome Mr. Nick Lanciano over there. I should point to where he appears to you. Uh, up, up there, <laughs> Glenn Watt to my left. Uh, hopefully, we got another good show for you today. What do you think? I think so. Gonna be all right. Yeah, we got right, some good. got some loose ends I need tying up, but oh. I we'll, we'll make it work. We got a couple of them tied up with about 20 seconds to go before we went live. So yeah, buddy. But I gotta say, smoother start than uh, last week. Yeah. So days without injuries. Five one. <laughs> no. Shh. All right. Um, <laughs> We're glad that you were here with us. Uh, who, who have we seen out there so far, Glenn? I got Lazy Left Eye, I believe. Keith Rierick, Jimbo Burt, Roll Jimbo. Tide Slim Jim Burt, Adam Jellison, good to see you, sir. Wayne Anderson, Brian Lehman, greets to you too as well. Who's out there, may I ask? Uh, Tim Henderson's out there, Tom Schaefer. Unfortunately, as usual, I can't see who's on the YouTubes. Is it possible? Do we have any out, anybody out there right now, Nick? Uh, yeah, yeah. We got Rick Stevens, everybody. Rick I don't Stevens. Know if you can hear me. Rick I Stevens. I don't know. If, uh, Nick, yeah, Nick, 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 we don't have a mic hooked up uh, for Nick. Maybe bad. during one of the videos, I'll get that cable <laughs> run so you can hear Mike. But he says Rick Stevens is out there. Uh, uh, Greg Tiffany. Greg hey. Tiffany. Olson. Nice. Yeah, buddy. Well, nice. welcome, France. welcome all. Michael Capato out there. Yeah, Mike Chris. All right, Kathy Sheehy Starling, the capster herself out there. Welcome, welcome aboard. That's Kim's mom. Yeah. Thank you. Did you know that? I kind of put two and two together. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got a few things to talk to you about today, including the current sale going on. Mm -hmm. If you've noticed a trend, perhaps you have. Uh, we're running a different sale every week at CB Giddy. If you, Focusing on mm. some different categories of our most popular uh, parts. So far, it's been focused on parts for the builders out there. And then we'll start looking at kits and gear and gift ideas as we approach the holiday season. Yeah, yeah buddy. All right. So, uh, Brian says they can hear Nick. Not Good. sure through what, but that's all right. I don't know. It's a mystery. Must be <laughs> coming through my mic or something. Um, We've got a couple of videos for you, two from Jim Morris and yeah. one from Turtle Box Guitars yeah. coming up a little bit later. Uh, we're going to have some fiddling with Giddy, if you couldn't have guessed by me holding this fiddle. Glenn and I have been feverishly and almost frantically practicing a couple of new tunes uh, to roll out for you. Um, also going to be talking about uh, something a little special. You can't currently see them just off camera. Uh, one of the older varieties of homemade instruments, uh, predating cigar box instruments by a good bit, good bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we got a lot to, uh, of course, Watt Corner. Oh, some new T-shirt designs. Yeah, buddy. Oh, the the relaunch. Oh, oh it's stuff. Oh, just a tease, just a hint of something back in stock. Corner of a plastic bag. Just, yeah, just one shiny, glared up plastic bag. Oh, just just teasing them. Um, see Rusty Taylor and Philip Taylor out there. Hey. No relation, well, I don't think. Well. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, so the sale going on this week, if you've gotten the CB Giddy newsletter or the Cigar Box Nation newsletter, then you already know what's going on. If you've been looking at the Giddy page or the Cigar Box Nation page here on Facebook, then you already know what's going on. All strings mm -hmm. and fret wire 
are on sale right now at cbgiddy.com using the coupon code TWANG19, T-W-A-N-G-1-9, all one word, all uppercase. You enter that in during checkout, and you will get 20% off any strings or fret wire in your shopping cart. Does that include hobo fiddle strings? It does. Does that include bulk fret wire? Hobo fiddle? So you got a hobo fiddle? Yeah. Strings that go on there? It includes bulk fret wire. And actually, I don't want to say that out loud, but yeah, it's an extra screaming deal on a pound of medium, medium fret wire mm. because of this sale and CB Giddy's mm. free shipping <laughs> promotion. So yeah, you get extra special deals on uh, yes. a lot of good stuff. So uh, this sale so far has been the most popular one as far as coupon code usage good. Uh, at this stage of it, because it just launched yesterday. Um, are you going to talk about the poll in what corner? I hadn't thought about it, but it's, it's something worth mentioning, I reckon. I yeah. got to tell you, uh, we could do it now. Let's do it. I got nothing do else. It. All new show, folks. Yeah, buddy. Some of, we don't even know what the heck's coming up next. Um, <laughs> True. If you get the Giddy newsletter, and I hope you do, mm -hmm. uh, for the last three weeks running, three or four, uh, Glenn here, who mm -hmm. is the assembler of assembler. the creator of the, the new Giddy newsletter, has been putting a poll in there asking you, those of you who received the newsletter, to share your views on certain things. And what was this most recent one? Well, that was last week, actually, and that was whether uh, whether you prefer to build with rod pizos or disc pizos. Mm. This week, uh, uh, this week we didn't have a poll. Instead, it was more of a question like, the pollsters on vacation this week, uh, folks. It was asked, well, there's plenty of questions to be asked, but uh, <laughs> instead of the poll question, you can see the results. In this week's newsletter, you can see the results of last week's poll, but then in this week's newsletter as well, you can see a request that you, uh, you send an email in to, uh, to describe why it is that you prefer the rod piezo over the oh. disc piezo or vice versa. But, yeah. That's, always, that's harder to answer. It's easier to click a It yes is. Or no it's a lot it. easier to click a button. And we'll, we'll be going back next week to the polls, just the straight, you know, either or, uh, because we just, we, we enjoy being able to better understand you and, and have that sort of uh, interaction with some, something that we're trying to make valuable for your email inbox. This most recent one asking disc versus rod piezo, it was like 60 40 disc, right? Yes. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Over 100. Requires well, yeah. pol polies, polies, pol polsties, polster, I don't know. Something, something like you. that. Well, thank you. Hey, Shane Spiel out there. What? If you've been uh, watching the Facebook page or getting today's uh, Nation newsletter, you'll see a lot of Shane, and that is because over the years he has done a number of lessons and tutorials about alternate tunings yeah, for cigar box guitars. About how, in a lot of cases, this happens to be a four string, but in a lot of cases, just by changing the tuning of one string, you can get an entirely different sound. One of my favorites that he talked about on a three string tuned to GDG, if you take that middle, uh, if you take one of those G's, I think he took the high G down to an F. F. Yep. Yeah, or G7. G, GDF gives you that bluesy seventh, that G seventh sound. And, you know, Shane's been playing these things for a long, long time. Wow. Um, He's tried a lot of different stuff and found a lot of cool things along the way. So we're featuring all of those articles, uh, you know, to kind of help promote the Giddy Strings sure. sale, but, you know, also to help expand horizons. That's what we're always trying to do here is like, that's what we'll be talking about here in a moment, a few moments mm -hmm. with uh, today's special feature. It's what I'm doing with the fiddle. Yeah. You know, Glenn Watt picking up the six string when he usually plays the bass. And before yeah. it was the bass, it was the three, you know, changing it up every once in a while, yeah. trying new things. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Keep it interesting. Why man. not? Yeah. So, yeah, strings and fret wire, that's through Monday, Monday evening, technically midnight. There you go. But it won't actually shut off until Tuesday morning because I'm not staying up till midnight. <laughs> Got to get my beauty rest. That's right, clearly. buddy. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to put the fiddle down now for just a moment. We'll be getting back to that with Fiddling with Giddy, because it's time for today's special feature. Yeah? What's the theme song for today's special feature? Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> but clearly, <laughs> we got nothing. Um, all right, I'm going to go briefly yeah? off stage here and bring on oh. to the stage oh. something pretty special. Yeah. Here is the top 
boom, boom. Unfortunately, it won't all fit in the... Uh, Shane Spiel will recognize this. Here is the bottom. There's even a look inside. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the gut bucket uh, from Charlie Boyle's greenhouse. My friend Charlie Boyle. Uh, the greenhouse was a place where music was made for many years and a couple of friends of Charlie's made this gut bucket for him uh, a number of years ago. The, the name of the guy, <laughs> a lot of nicknames at the greenhouse. The guy's nickname was Meat, M-E-A-T, and his wife Christine built this gut bucket for Charlie. As you can see, it's just a plastic five gallon bucket. The, uh, the string, and it's not weed whacker line, this is like some kind of clothes line it looks like. The string goes down through. On the inside there's a washer tied to the string that holds it in place, keeps it from coming through. Up top, what I really like about this, from the first moment I saw it, it is a lever style gut bucket. So where a lot of uh, these sorts of bases have a, a pole that you move back and forth to change the tension, this one uses a lever and because of how the lever is situated you know you got a little more over here on the back of the handle than the front you can change your pitch pretty uh, significantly now I'm gonna tip it a little well actually I won't at first I'm gonna throw what I'm gonna get down there with my microphone actually if that's okay hmm maybe not all right <laughs> I see it. I think they're hearing it. So uh, actually, let's see. I'm trying to thump, thump, thump. That's it. Now that's with uh, the bucket flat against the floor. If I tip that up a little bit, put my shoe under there. It's impressive. So with just a little change of the tension on the string there, of course you change the, uh, the pitch. And you can play kind of a bass line along with it's it's as much percussion as it is uh, melodic, you know, uh, pitch wise. But uh, with practice, you can get used to where the uh, where those spots are, where those pitches are. So to close today's show, I'm going to try to play this along with Glenn to do the uh, Giddy Gang theme song. So this is Charlie Boyle's Gut Bucket. I'm honored uh, that it, it was given to me. Uh, Af, af, with his passing and with the uh, the passing of the greenhouse itself, uh, I'm glad to be able to have gotten this. I certainly want to experiment with this style, the lever style, because of course many of you, most of you probably know, there are other ways to do such things. Here is an example. This is a small wash tub here. This is more the wash tub base style. You get a stick, and this is just an old handle of from something. I don't even know, some kind of hardwood handle there. You make a little notch in the bottom, and then by moving this stick back and forth, you change the tension of the string. Let's see. Get this over here like that. Get your foot on there and still sounds great. That is a just, I made this in about five minutes a few years back out in the Giddy shop, um, just from some stuff that was hanging around. Jimbo Bird is asking, what is the string gauge on the base? In this case, there's no, it's not a gauged string so much, I don't think. On which one, Jim? Yeah, on, which, the, on the gut bucket? The green bucket's kind of like purlon paracord type material. Yeah, yeah, and it's pretty thin. It's like an eighth of an inch. Yeah, about an eighth of an inch. Okay, let's get big, big Bertha up here now. So some of you may recognize this. This is the upright base that I built a while back. Actually, before we came out with the G-Base kit, Glenn, you played this yeah. fairly regularly on the show. Uh, this is a two-string base. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's got a full-size wash tub. Uh, as the resonator with a, a thin plywood uh, soundboard on there that I stenciled something on. And then it's got its own built-in stand there. 
which is a preschool sized chair from my old elementary school in Ohio. So it's not a light or particularly portable instrument. Great for deadlifts. <laughs> it's great for building up um, the neck. <coughs> the main part of the neck here is one of the side rails from an old wooden ladder my grandfather had. You can actually see on the back here the, uh, the rung holes <laughs> from, from its ladder days. And the front is a piece of maple hardwood it's actually tongue and groove flooring material from the old crayon factory my grandpa worked at. They're saying, uh, don't, uh, don't hit Glenn with the bass there. No promises, Ford, people. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try that again. There you go. So two string bass, this has actual upright bass strings on it. Originally it had braided um, oh, steel. stainless steel cable on it. Rough. Oh, it would just tear you right up. Pretty much needed gloves to play it. And now it's got the actual upright bass strings, which are just smooth like butter. Smooth like butter. So those are three. Um, What's the neck dimensions? Okay, on that upright base? Uh, way too big, like just giant. You know, it, it, it's. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I had no idea what the heck I was doing when I built that. Didn't I didn't pre-research scale lengths. I yeah, just, I just, 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 I just do it. I just thought, was, is this a danger explosives because it, it almost blew up on the first one? Um, or is that just the aesthetic choice? No, that's just aesthetics. Uh, Nick was asking about the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, choice of stenciling on the front there. It was just to make it look cool-ish. Well, if it's in the first one, start pulling off the... Uh... Yeah, the first go at it, there was a different plywood top on it that I'd actually gotten from an old That's packing right. crate, That's and right. it was kind of letting go. And it, it's been, it, it's had one major revision so far, and this one's holding up pretty well. And Shaq, we're not blowing you off, man. We'll, uh, during one of the videos, we'll get a measurement on that for you. Oh, the neck dimensions? Yeah. It's like two and a half inches wide. The scale length is 48 inches, which go. is a lot longer than, is that what he wanted to know? I scale don't, just, I just read neck, neck dimensions. Um, yeah, scale length is a full four feet, which is significantly longer than the longest scale upright base. And that's uh, just because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, yeah. ain't gonna lie. It could, if it had a third string on it, Mm -hmm. The next one up, because it's tuned GD, you know, a, a, a conventional upright bass is tuned, I believe, EADG, like an electric bass. Went with GD on this one, so we could, so originally, so Glenn or myself could play along with songs being played on a GDG cigar box guitar without having to think too hard or learn anything, right. which really is one of our major motivating, <laughs> my motivating factors. Anytime I'm trying something new, like, as long as I don't have to learn nothing, I'll probably, right. I'll probably be all right. right. So yeah, um, now maybe you don't know this. Fun fact, I was reading about wash tub bases mm. and such on Wikipedia, and the entry for wash tub base, of course, mentions gut buckets. And they give one possible origin of the name gut bucket, because I've wondered, like, where did that come from? One possible origin. Uh, you know, back in the day, turn of the 19th century, in the South, American South, poor folks, uh, and according to the Wikipedia uh, uh, article, more so uh, African American people uh, would go down and, and get um, the stuff you need for making chitterlings. Now, some of our friends from the South might know about some of this, but basically deep fried chunks of intestinal stuff from uh, animals. Um, and so they each had their pail for going down and getting that, and that those pails were known at, uh, quite appropriately as gut buckets, and that, you know, maybe on a Saturday evening it could be turned over and strung up and, and played as an instrument. Now that might be apocryphal. I don't know. But I'd be interested to hear what you know about possible origins of the word Term apocryphal. gut bucket. Apocryphal? 
I can know about that more. Oh, you know. I don't know what that means. The Apocrypha, <laughs> hold, hold on to your onions, folks. The Apocrypha is the group of books of the Bible that were never officially approved. The Apocrypha. Uh, so there's, there's a bunch of stuff in there that didn't quite make the cut. So apocryphal means not quite official. Got it. Or possibly on the fringes of believability, whatever. Cool, thank you. Sorry. So anyway, if you know more about the origins of the term gut bucket and wash tub bases in general. Of course, the wash tub base in particular became more uh, popular or had a bit of a revival in the 1950s uh, with the advent of jug band music or over in the UK, uh, the skiffle craze as it was known. Wash tub base, also tea chest bases, uh, Shaq and friends over there in the UK might have heard the term tea chest base, which is basically a big wooden box that presumably tea was shipped in, I don't know. But you do kind of the same thing. You get a stick and a string and boom, 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 mm -hmm. play it um, by changing the tension. So, you know, this idea of making a bass, percussive type bass instrument out of wash tubs, buckets, tea chests, gas cans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what it, basically whatever you got. Wooden crates, uh, I was reading in this, look up the Wikipedia article on wash tub base if you want to see more, but there's a tra traditions from all over the world of people doing this sort of thing. Mm. So I think it's interesting. It is interesting. And it's all pretty darn easy to build, especially the basic ones. They're just a, a tub, a stick, and a string. You know, it doesn't take a lot of, mm. a lot of DIY uh, daring do <laughs> to, uh, to get that done. So anyway. That is the gut bucket, of course, focused around the, the artifact from Charlie Boyle's greenhouse there, the, what I consider the official gut bucket. Now, Rusty's saying, the tub you'd put under a slaughtered pig to catch the guts. I like that too, yep. the gut bucket. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I think it's about time to run a video. I've been yeah. talking too much. Bah. Bah. I like the history myself, but, well, I need a drink of water, too. All right, so we've got the first of two videos for you from our good buddy, Jim Morris, the, the guru, the handmade music guru of the West Virginia mountains down there, uh, doing a little bit of uh, milk cow blues, I think. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, all right. Someday 
you're gonna be sorry that you treated me this way. Sail on, sail on, little girl, sail on. I said, sail on, sail on, little girl, you better sail on. You're gonna keep sailing till you lose your happy home. Good evening, baby, don't that sun look good going down. I said, good evening, baby, don't that sun look good going down. Well, ain't that home so lonesome when your baby ain't around? Now, ain't your home so lonesome when your love ain't around? Love me some Jim Morris. How who, about you, Glenn? Who doesn't, man? Who doesn't? I gotta admit, uh, about the gut bucket stuff, I appreciate, Ken, Turtle Boss Guitars, you, you saying this as well, that you also love the history, uh, as does Sue Messiah, so thank Sue. you for saying that. Mulligan uh, Stew, it's, Sue! It's good to see Mrs. Moore Banjo out there, Kim Naylor Morris. And uh, somebody else wrote something here. Thought, oh, that William, a., William Steed was writing that uh, he remembers how his brother caught holy heck for putting a hole in the bottom <laughs> yeah. of his mom's wash tub. <laughs> Five or six years, that's awesome. Great story. Uh, uh, about the, the, the name uh, uh, Gut Bucket, Michael Capato re, uh, wrote that it was the pig slaughter bucket, so yep. insofar as somebody he met in Michigan says. Uh, a couple other things, just real quick. Rusty, th cheeky, as always, uh, added uh, they used every, everything but the oink. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I, I remember hearing that my grandpa grew up during the Depression of course, in the in southern Ohio, which isn't quite the deep south, but uh, he he pointed that out before mm. too. Like when you slaughtered a pig, you you made it you made it count. And about that Jim Morris video, if anybody didn't notice, I'm not trying to take too much time with this, but Jim played it beautifully. Uh, but it was a three-string tuned G D G, like a lot of our uh, stuff. Right. And uh, but it was fretted. I don't know if you noticed this. It was fretted uh, dulcimer, diatonically, so like a dulcimer. Uh, not chromatically like a uh, like a conventional guitar or a lot of our CBGs are now, but uh, diatonically. And uh, he also had a capo on it, which allowed him to play. I don't want to unpack this because I don't know a yeah. lot about it, but it allowed him to play in something that is similar to like, uh, I guess, older folk music that I'm yeah. only now becoming familiar with. Is uh, a lot of it was written like in Dorian. This it was a minor mode with a natural six, and so it just had a particular sound to it. And uh, so, all good stuff. We're gonna just, be we're I gonna be it. doing a song that's in uh, a Nickelodeon here, a or Nickelodeon, Mixolydian, or something <laughs> like that. Here shortly. It's true. But oh, yeah, should be mic'd up too now, guys. Yeah, we got. Uh, give us another little holler there, Nick. Holler. Can you guys hear me all right out there? Yeah, I think you're coming through. Yeah, cool. I mean, um, we're, we're getting bars now. That's really weird. When you uh, when you capo diatonic fretting, very interesting things happen. I know in the past our good buddy uh, John Nickel has expounded upon that uh, mm. okay. subject before about capo first, capo second going up. And speaking of John Nickel, John Nickel, yeah, buddy. Just this week we got a shipment of this is the what I was teasing you with before. I'll come on up. The one string, single string, single pull John Nickel pickups there. They come with grounding strips and uh, popular John Nickel pickups. The listing says they come with uh, Buffalo Nickels. Ooh. I don't see no Buffalo Nickel in here. We might have to add those. Because <laughs> we, got, we got plenty of those that we use in uh, box corners and things. But yeah, these are the pickups. Now, Glenn, do you remember how John uses these. You can, of course, use them in a diddly bow or a canjo, a single string instrument, but John uses them in a little bit different way. I'll let you explain it. However, I do know that uh, Ben was kind enough to try to prompt me here a little bit with uh, three of the, generally uh, his higher strings are, are mics, usually with disc pizos. He's got a special way of doing it, but his lower strings, similar to a John Lowe, uh, he puts those single pull, single pull magnet, ma magnet pickups underneath the lower strings. I, I think. I think what he does, basically he's got two output jacks on his cigar box guitar. 
one of these single pulls is under the low, say it's a GDG, it's under the low G string. And that gets output through an octave pedal, I believe, to oh, drop okay. it down and goes to a bass amp. And that gives him, when he hits that string, he's got his bass thump, thump to thump that. Right. The other, all three strings, excuse me, there's a, a standard three string pickup that picks up all three strings. That's hooked up to the second jack. That gets output to a standard guitar amp, and that gives him his, his higher, you know, guitar sound. So with one guitar, an octave pedal, a couple of amps, and some other goodies, he gets a much broader range mm. of, of sound out of a single guitar. And if you've ever seen or heard John perform, it's hard to believe there's one dude up there mm. making all of that sound, you know, especially when he gets his drum pedals going. And mm. Yeah, so it, it, very interesting things can be done with these single pole pickups. You are correct. You mentioned John Lowe's name, Johnny Lobo, on his... Uh, on his Lobos and other instruments, he's done similar things using actual bass strings. Mm. You have one bass string with a single pull pickup under that, and then the other two or three, however many strings, have a separate pickup, and mm. yeah, all sorts of neat stuff going on. But we're glad. We've only got a limited supply of them, and, and honestly, who knows if or when we'll get any more. So if you like such things, uh, we've got them. Hand wound by a pillar of the cigar boss guitar community. Hand wound. And one aren't at a time, you, test carefully tested. Yeah. yeah, he. You mentioned both John Nickel and John Lowe. Am I correct in saying they are both going to be at the upcoming 2019 Cigar Boss Guitar Festival in Chicago? I think they both are. I think I know John Nickel, and I'm pretty confident that John Lowe is as well. That's November 1st. It's coming. Yeah, well, somebody I'll asked where you going. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. You should, man. Take the bus down to Boston South Station, get on that Amtrak train. Go. It runs straight from Boston to Chicago. Oh. Chicago. Chicago. It's the Lake Shoreline there. Hey, dear guy. Hey. Ah, that'd be something. That'd be cool. I, I could use a little trip. I ain't going <laughs> to lie. Uh, what do we got next there, Glenn Watt? What do we have something now? Something good, after I the hope. John to get fiddling with Giddy. Oh, boy. <sighs> All right. I'm going to switch the mics over to the condenser so we I don't blast you out mm. with the fiddle right over my mic. And so uh, hold on to your onions, people. Yeah, this, it's going to be some good stuff. We got... Morris built. There we go. Ago. We had a moment of no sound there, but now Perfect. it's yeah, back. They're getting an echo on mine. I'm thinking they're hearing me over the other ones. I'm not sure. I don't know. Who knows? I don't talk as much, so. Y'all don't come here to see me. All right. Hopefully you can hear us there. Not too loud. Trying to keep everything under control. All right. So we've got two selections for you today. And of course, speaking of our buddy Jim Morris, he built this fiddle uh, several years back uh, using plans that were posted on Cigar Box Nation. You can see, I don't know if I've ever really showed it off. Mm. Can you tell I'm stalling because I'm nervous about playing these we, songs? We both are. Um, a broomstick style uh, neck that goes all the way through the box and then the fretboard kind of floating on that up at an angle over the bridge and a floating tailpiece there on the back. I added the chin rest. I forgot my mic isn't on. Oh, nah. oh well. <laughs> Listen close. All right, so uh, we're going to start with an Irish tune. Um, called The Little Beggarman. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think this might still be too loud. We'll see. Um, the Little Beggarman. This was, uh, Tommy Makem sang this. Tommy's mother, Sarah Makem, sang it. It's one of those songs that kind of helped relaunch the Irish folk uh, tradition in the late 50s, early 60s. Um, this was also singing it. We're not going to sing it. We're going to play the tune. Uh, singing this was one of Charlie Boyle's favorite, mm. this was one of his favorite songs, and he'd do it with great flair and aplomb. I'm not sure we ever quite worked out our start, but we're going to figure it out. A little slower. There we go.
lost it there at the end. That was good. That was good. <clears throat> Should have quit while I was ahead. But um, so yeah, that's the little beggarman. It, it's a cool song. Um, well, I am a little beggar and a beggar, and I have been for three score years in this little isle of green. I'm known from the Liffey down to Sago, and I'm known by the name of Old Johnny Doon. Not gonna sing the whole song for you right now. So that's uh, selection one. Sorry, kind of. You did good. I enjoyed. Glenn it. did good I on his it. accompaniment. I uh, was in me head too much on that. Um, so we're going to, you know, follow up on that with another go at another song. This one, I don't, this might be one of those that comes down from the Scotch-Irish tradition. I don't know. Jim Burt's asking about chicken in the straw, possibly referring to turkey in the straw, ah. which has not quite yet made it into my repertoire. I can play it on the uh, cigar box guitar. Yes. Um, we're going to have a go at Sally Gooden. Mm -hmm. which is up there with Turkey in the Straw as one of the better known uh, fiddle, old-timey, bluegrassy type tunes. How are we doing that one again? I don't know. <laughs> clearly, uh, clearly I lost complete track of how we were doing that last one, too. Oh, well. So, had a piece of pie, had a piece of pudding, gave it all away just to see my Sally Gooden. show folks <laughs> so anyway um fiddle you know it's one of those things i suppose it's true for for any instrument especially one you're trying to learn or are kind of new at i guess i can turn the main mics back up but uh you can practice it by yourself over and over and over and at mm. home you know and you think you're doing all like i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready then you you get in front of people on stage or in front of a camera and it's like it all just goes it's tough it's like what the where did that go yeah what happened the um first dozen times that i came up to play on stage with you I'm yeah like, oh, I <laughs> i've never heard this song before in my life what's what's happening it's true. um i've been trying to force my way through that uh, as i was saying last week um, by playing the fiddle on this show it's mm. certainly not to uh show off <laughs> <laughs> that should be clear by now. Mm -hmm. But to try to show that, you know, anyone, if you put the, some effort in, yeah. anyone can play, and not necessarily the fiddle, but your cigar box guitars or That's banjos right. or basses or, right. or diddly bows or canjos, whatever, that, you know, you, you, you work at it and mm. it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. You can get in front of people. I've been taking this fiddle to the uh, weekly Irish session. Uh, that my friend Frank runs over in Dover. Over in Dover, yes sir. And uh, you know, pull, trying to play along. If I know a song really well, I'll try to play along with the melody. Problem is, anytime you're holding a fiddle, everybody wants to throw you a what's called a break. That's like, you know, you'll you'll be doing a song like Sally Good, and then the fiddle will get a break, and the mm -hmm. banjo will get a break, and the mandolin, basically, like a little solo almost. And they keep trying to throw me solos on the fiddle. I'm like, I'm not ready yet. But, you know, do it anyway. Even if it sounds like crap. You 
still do it. And little by little, your confidence builds, your skill level builds. You start hearing like, I, I can start hearing on this that, all right, I'm hitting the notes better. There's fewer sour notes. I'm, my finger, my muscle memory is getting there so I can hit that D, hit that G every time, or almost every time, uh, without having to think about it too much. As Nick says, trial by fire, catharsis, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. So anyway, keep sawing away at it. I actually went to the local music shop in Dover um, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, to look at fiddles. Conventional, you know, real violins. And uh, I think everybody who knows me thought, he's going to come home with a fiddle. <laughs> and I didn't. I did not buy one. I tried a few out. I really liked one, but like, eh. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to ease into this. Yeah. Well, I admire your tenacity, so I think that's awesome. <laughs> just, <laughs> just plain old stubborn headedness. But uh, Jim Morris is the one that inspired, he didn't just build the fiddle, his example inspired me to mm. try to pick it up and learn it. Uh, fortunately, we were able to pull a video mm. from the archives of Jim playing, I believe Cotton Eye Joe mm. in this one, on, I don't think it's on this fiddle, it's on another one he built, but, uh, so I, I showed you where I'm at, now let's watch somebody who can uh, really have a good go at it. So here's Jim Morris again. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Crimson and clove. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty years ago, Daddy worked a man named Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe, Cotton Eye Joe, Cotton Eye Joe, Cotton Eye I'd have been married a long time ago if it had not have been for Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe, Cotton Eye Joe, Cotton Eye Joe, Cotton Eye Joe. Corn stalk fiddle and a shoestring bow Playing that tune called Cotton Eye Joe Where'd you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe Cotton Eye Joe Cotton Eye Joe Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe That, uh, a little more backstory. Jim built that fiddle. You saw the photo briefly at the beginning that he showed, you know, Shane Spiel posted a, about a uh, hundred year old fiddle on Cigar Box Nation. The post consisted of that photo. Jim looked at the photo and built that fiddle from it. And as you could see, you know, there's no radius fretboard on there. There's no. Mm. <laughs> he picks it up and does that I with know. it. Just that's something else. Yeah, buddy, good stuff. And so, like Mrs. Mrs. Morris out there was <laughs> saying, tongue in cheek, possibly, but he lives in the garage. Lives in the garage. Oh, and and here's the other thing. Like he posted that video. I 
hours. It couldn't have been. I think it was the next day, but it had only been like 14 hours from when Shane first posted the the photo. Yeah. So like he's like, you know. If it seems like we love Jim too much, <laughs> well, it's impossible to love him to, too much. You're gonna have to deal with you're it. You're gonna have to do it. He is he is really a, a, truly an inspir truly an inspiration for us here, and I I we I. I'll speak for us. I, we hope that he is for you as well. That man is a talented, humble, giving, caring man who puts a lot into his music, and it comes out uh, in his uh, in what he builds and what he plays. Yeah, yeah. impressive. He's one of my musical heroes. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. How could he not be? That's right. Now I see this. Is that uh, where we're going? Let's talk about that after Watt Corner. All right. Hey. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Nothing heavy, everybody. Nothing heavy. That's good. It's good. Welcome back to Walk Corner. You know the deal. Thanks for being here. I uh, Whoa, there's one. Hey, -oh. I did say, um, speaking of upright or gut bucket, but that's not a gut bucket, but upright bases. I do want to say quickly, I, it, Rob Robel, if you're still out there, I saw you earlier, and Del Puckett, I, th I hope, is still out there. I th I, we did see you earlier. Um, if you, if you are subscribed, we mentioned this earlier, if you're subscribed to the CB Giddy newsletter, and I hope that you are, uh, this week we included videos from both Rob and uh, Dell that are re rel related to the string, uh, the fr string and fret wire sales. So the fret wire currently and through Monday night is on sale here at CB Giddy with the coupon code TWANG19, T-W-A-N-G-1-9, all uppercase, all one word, no spaces. You'll receive 20% off of fret wire and strings. It's really hard to maintain a straight face sometimes, but I'm going to do it this time. Uh, I see how it's going to play out. But because of this fret wire sale uh, uh, especially, I wanted, we wanted to include videos from both Dell and uh, Rob because they put out these outstanding tutorials on how they, you know, how they uh, work with and finish frets. And I hope that you get the newsletter so you can check out those videos. You don't need the newsletter to see the videos, but I hope that you got to get them both. So awesome stuff. Thank you both for, uh, for being out there for the community. So first up we have here, as you can see, Nick's already got the picture up of Rufus P, a relatively new member to the uh, Cigar Box Nation, uh, our good friend over in Wales. He's a Welshman. Uh, and this, we actually had this photo in cor Watt Corner last week. And so, because there are some progress picks to his wheelbarrow base. In the next pick, you'll see uh, Rufus, as he calls himself. Yeah, he's got a, the next a little bit, same wheelbarrow, the next a little short. He's short in the neck, and he's got a soundboard on there. He's got the uh, F style holes on there, and the thing is coming along. And uh, I don't know if the sun ever shines over in that uh, beautiful area, but uh, it's. Uh, really cool to see Rufus come along with his wheelbarrow uh, upright bass. I personally can't wait to hear hear it. Hopefully he posts videos of it. And if he does, I hope to get him here on the show. So great stuff, Rufus. If you ever see this show, the Giddy Gang Show, I hope that you enjoy seeing yourself on it because I know that we do. So thanks for being out there, man. Next up, we got from Jimmy C. Uh, I'll hold on to this. Jimmy C writes now. I know oh, we start with the distant pick. We'll bring it in a little bit closer in a minute. Uh, Jimmy C built this recent cigar box guitar with a Jittery J neck. If you don't know, Jittery J is out there making necks out of Spectraply, that layered colored wood, so that when you cut it and shape it, you get all these really cool designs cut through it. And in the next picture that Nick has for you, you'll see the back of the guitar. And I know it's hard to see on a mobile device, but if you're on a desktop, you'll see, if you haven't already, just the textures and the, the color scheme that goes along with being sha uh, shaped and sanded and whatnot. Beautiful necks that Jimmy Circle, in this case, used on his re most recent cigar box guitar. And in the last photo, you'll see the actual the focus of the, the box. He's got some artwork on it. I remember that one. Yeah. Now, Jimmy C. writes, the artwork is a painting, uh, or I'll paraphrase, the artwork is a painting bought at the York, Pennsylvania Art Show the day after the Cigar Box Guitar Festival this past August, where they set that uh, world, uh, Guinness Book of World Record for a number of... Uh, Cigar Box Guitar Ensemble members. Uh, so he bought this the day after at an art show in the same town. Uh, with the artist's permission, Jimmy had Ben Giddy Baker reproduce the image on one of our custom boxes. Uh, the artist, who I think deserves credit, is Sue Kelly, and the painting is titled The Citadel. Uh, Jimmy used tuners bought, as it turns out, from the same festival from uh, our, an old friend of ours here, Mike Orr. Uh, who uh, we carry a book um, written by Mike Orr here. Uh, and the rest of the hardware is all from Giddy. Thank you very much, Jimmy. And what I love about what Jimmy shared here was that at the end of his post, that he, what he wrote uh, to accompany the pictures was, thanks to all who contributed. And what I love about that is like, Jimmy, you're the one who built it. 
So that, you know, it's really cool that he's just willing to take the time to, to kind of push off the, not the push off, but to, to just give thanks to everybody that came together to help make this possible. And I just think that's really cool, Jimmy. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. That's really good stuff. Next up, we got Ryan S. Ryan S. had a box with a uh, clear see-through top on it. Not in this photo, but I want to, uh, so as you can see, he turned the box over to make this and use the bottom for the top of the guitar. So in the next image, you'll see that clear backside. Oh, here it comes. A clear backside. So you can see the, the components inside the guitar. Now, part of the reason I'm particularly fond about this, Ryan, is that, if you're out there, is that I never think to do something as simple as that. Just, if I saw the box with a clear top, I'd just pass it on by. I see other people building really cool guitars with them, but I'll just pass it on by. Just simply turn the box over, man. You can just give yourself a whole new world of possibilities. And I really dig, I do dig the back, the clear back so you can see inside it, but I just love just, just turn the box over, man, and do something with it. And that's what you did. So really good stuff, Ryan. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. And uh, next up, we got from Jim M. Uh, that is Jim Morris. Because he, again, huh? I know, this guy. These are, uh, it's not the great, you know, I, I, I know, I can't do much with the picture. It's just a, a distant, far off picture with multiple instruments. But Jim writes, our local artists co-op where I display and sell has, me, has made me a featured artist this month. And this display, display will stay up until November. And I just think it's hats off to Jim Morris for getting out there and uh, contributing to the community and just being, getting a little bit of, getting a little bit of recognition publicly outside of the cigar box guitar community, outside of the handmade musical instrument community, and just the general public, so that people can come in and see, you know, the folk instruments that have inspired what it is that you and I do today. And so, really good stuff, Jim. Congratulations. Uh, next up, we got from Patricia S. This is uh, her, Patricia writes. I'm just going to read it right straight from it. This guitar was a blue ribbon first place winner in the 2019 Virginia State Fair. Congratulations, Patricia. Uh, I won a blue ribbon in the same category last year, she writes. I have been doing this for a couple of years now and learned something new with each build. Great attitude. I have started branding on all my guitars on the headstock with my trademark, the anchor and heart, because in my faith, this symbolizes faith, hope, and love. I love that. I love that. Just, that's good stuff. Uh, I'm retired and enjoy looking for interesting boxes, finding new wood sources for the necks and fingerboards. Some of my necks come from recycled materials, but all of my necks and fingerboards are handmade. And the bridges and nuts are made from deer antlers. Uh, I would say to anyone thinking of building a CBG, it's just like eating potato chips. You can't build just one. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Well, I love building this guitar, she writes. And Patricia also adds that I have found many of my tools and supplies at... CB Giddy. Thank you, Patricia. That's good to hear. So thank you very much. Now, uh, next up, we got from Dave. Dave Linus, a stalwart and true member of Cigar Box Nation. Dave writes about this. On one of those far-off pictures, he used a, a, a that sunburst hobo fiddle box that you can get at CB Giddy Crafter Supply. So what he built here was a two-string bass. And the next image, what you'll see, uh, a little better probably, is that he used, uh, aside from the Giddy box, which I love that sunburst, uh, the Giddy Box, a steamer tailpiece, poplar neck, poplar bridge, a paddock, fretboard, fingerboard, a uh, piezo pickup note, a volume pot. And the next image you'll see that uh, he washed the sides in the back. Oh, you can't see the back, but he washed the sides with a watercolor wash to match the box lid, which is just good stuff because the, it, it, the hobo fiddle box is that sunburst box. It's the top that's done up all fancy like that. The sides are left for you to to uh, customize on your own or leave as you will. In this case, Dave has washed them with a the watercolor. It just looks outstanding. And the last, go ahead. And that's, it's a bass, right? Yes. Two string bass. Two string bass. <laughs> yeah. And in the last image you'll see here you, you, that you can see the poplar neck. You can see the paddock, frit, frit, paddock whatever it's called, frit, fing, paddock, fingerboard, the two strings for the bass. And I love the scroll headstock with the two thin slices of mahogany on his ears on either side. It's just, that is some good craftsmanship, brother. And uh, I really appreciate you sharing it and doing really cool stuff with the stuff that you got from, from Ben. So good stuff, man. Thank you very much, Dave. And uh, last up, we got from our good friend, Louis LaManna. Louis writes, finished the hobo fiddle kit today, speaking of hobo fiddles, with my friend Gene. He loves it. The only issue I had was there were no issues, writes Aww. Louis. This, I'm... This is a Ben Love Fest now. This is a superbly designed kit from Gen Ben Giddy Baker. The instructions were thorough and precise. I highly recommend that you build one too. And judging by his friend Gene's happiness on that mug, I, uh, I, I, 
I think that's a pretty good idea is to build your own. I know Sue's out there, Sue Messias is building her hobo fiddle. She's a hand tool warrior, so she hopefully in the next couple days we'll see pictures of that. But oh, anyways, yeah. that's Walk Corner. Thank you for being here. I, I've been loving seeing the photos of people putting their hobo kittle hobo kittle fits to bed. <laughs> to burgers. Is this live? I'll come in again. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll fix it in post. Oh, there okay, go. good. Take all that out in post. <laughs> Putting their hobo fiddle kits together. Yeah, that's that's cool, cool stuff. Mm. I, I enjoy it. The long awaited. Long awaited. Long awaited. Far too long. Ah, totally worth got the wait. It, got though. it done right. Yep. Totally worth the wait. Um, all right. Uh, just a short, a brief aside here. You know, I've been talking about shirts, shirts a lot lately. I'm wearing a shirt here. It's the cord. You can't really see it too well. The cord form shirt. Uh, uh, Glenn has his hard times make great music shirt on. Yeah. Nick back there behind the scenes has his Giddy Gangsta shirt on. Well, we've got, believe it or not, several more new designs this week. And I decided, because uh, I'm not going to be able to keep this stretch of new designs going mm. indefinitely. Uh, last week I told you about a coupon code over at HoboFiddle.com. You can get 20% off all of the designs. Uh, I've kept that going. Uh, it, it is a limited use coupon. There's still a couple of uses uh, left on it. So I believe we've got photos of some of the new, uh, I believe there's three new designs. Here is this, this uh, handsome young man in front of us wearing its authentic and original cigar box guitars, CBG handmade there, floating coyly in front of us. Uh, so that's the dark on light version. You can see it's a dark blue print. On what are you, what are you I'm doing? Hold, I'm back holding shoulder to shoulder. Oh, that. <laughs> supporting the guy. He's my buddy. <laughs> um, so that's the dark blue on light. Now the next one, next image may be the reverse of that. It's a nice gold on. Oh, well we have a, a female model now. A nice gold on a dark navy. Uh, you can also get it on black or a dark asphalt sort of gray. So that's one of the new designs, trying to evoke that uh, vintage badge style mm. of, of T-shirt design. I love them. From days of yore. I love them. Oh, all right. What we got next? I'll know it when I see it. Oh, This Whoa. one, I, I like this one. I don't know, especially if you're on a, uh, a, a smartphone, it might be hard to see. Uh, Glenn and I were kicking around some ideas this week, last week. I think that was last week. Uh, different phrases and sayings and things that could be applied to this crazy, tweaked and applied to this crazy homemade instrument movement that we're all a part of. This one, of course, was inspired by uh, the slogan of a, a fairly well-known company who tells you to think different. You can figure out who might suggest that to you. Well, I thought, you know, think different, that's great. I like to build different. There you go. So for this one, got build different on there with the uh, cigar box guitar graphic that almost looks like it has a bite taken out there of you it. it. You know, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Wow. Uh, and with that gradient sort of design that for me evokes the old, like some of those old 70s t-shirts where they'd have that gradient from top to bottom. That's kind of what I was going for with this. So. It's available in this colorful uh, light print on dark materials, the, the black, the navy blue, and the asphalt. The next image, I think, is the reverse of that, where it's a dark black and bluish gradient on white mm. or, or heather gray. Dig it. And then I decided to do a third variant of it, which is monochrome, just a white, uh, a fully white and gray representation of that on dark. I love it. There. Uh, he's right. Adam's got a good point, Adam. He's it's, right. It's someday. We need a yeah buddy. Yeah shirt. buddy. Yeah buddy. Is it yeah comma buddy? I don't know. I'd ask to the people who started it. Yeah comma buddy. Well, I guess Call up Farley. See what she thinks. Yeah buddy. Yeah buddy. Yeah, yeah buddy. Yeah with three H's. Yeah, yeah buddy. Three. Exclamation. There you Five go. exclamation points. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there one more? Was that it? There's two oh. That was it. So those are the new designs, and there are some designs on there that I haven't ever even really like. Uh, no, it's me. me, me, me. Haven't ever really uh, posted about, but uh, yeah, good stuff. Twenty percent off HoboFiddle.com yeah. with the coupon code GittyGang, all one word, uppercase G I T T Y G A N G. Yeah. At HoboFiddle.com. Unlike the other 
promotion yeah, that we're Jim. currently running. See, Jim and Adam, they got this figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody uh, knows. Oh, and I just wanted to say, uh, back during Walk Corner, Nathan, Nathan had s said CB Giddy should start making spectra Spectraply necks and selling them. Nick uh, jumped in there to share what was in my brain. That that's uh, that's Jittery Jay's that's his thing, bag. and yep. we would never right. take that and start doing it. But I'm glad Nathan that you like them, and I echo what the others said. Get your Spectraply neck from Jittery, Jittery Jay. Yep. Because we, uh, not to get righteous, but we like supporting the community, not taking things from them yeah. and doing them ourselves. So we love carrying or seeing people out there selling their wares. What else you got? What oh, else you got? that was oh, we got that's another a reminder that we got the sale going on. Yeah. Saw the sale graphic. Now that's not the shirt sale. That is the fret wire and string sale at cbgiddy.com. But yeah, we do have another video sent in by, I believe he's still if out there. If you're still out there, Ken, Turtle Box. Turtle Box Guitars sent this video. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to see it for the first time with you all. Let's check it out. <laughs> Short and sweet. Thank so you. Uh, that's that's an old one. So thank. Just wanted to say we pulled that out of the archive, oh, especially too. Archival. We, yeah. All right. Good. Well, I see Jason is still out there. Jittery J, you're welcome, man. Believe me, I know how it feels to have someone out there uh, copying a lot of what you've done and worked hard for. So don't want to be doing anything like that. Right. I think that's about. Oh man, look at us. We're an hour and Holy four minutes smokes. in. Shut this mess down. Irish, so, yeah, oh, I wasn't going to play this. What the heck's going on here? I don't know. I think anybody who watches this show, I'm going to switch it back over to the house mics because who knows what. Yeah, sorry. Farmer John, folks. I'm not sure anybody else could be Farmer John. He's one of a kind. I can hit the C and the D, but I can't quite get the G. Taking it easy on me, folks. All right, can I sing it? <laughs> Giddy Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. It's Giddy Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. And we came to you live from CB.
Nick, you need a washboard. Nothing Ooh. heavy. <laughs> I got a beer gun. Oh, oh, you mean a... Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, we're not. All right, so thank you all again for joining us. We will hopefully see you again next week. Lord willing. And Crick don't rise. Have a great weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy.